Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here, and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Super Mario Sunshine for the Nintendo GameCube. So, last time we have a bit of a long drought when it comes to doing all these kinds of stuff during the past few, uh, well, I would say ever since on Monday that we did manage to tackle through uh, the 100 coin shine sprites in the forms of Record Harbor as well as Gelato Beach. And also in addition with those, we also managed to able to actually get ourselves um, the rest of the blue coins in these two worlds in particular. So yeah, that was a quite a long experience, wasn't it? So today, hopefully things are going to get a little bit more chill out at this point. Well, it wasn't until whenever we get into later parts throughout the game that we'll discuss more about it until then. So either way, today for this episode in particular is the fact that we're going to be jumping right things in into the next new world. And that is Serona Beach. And for this particular point, the first mission we have is the Mantara Storm. Some people usually consider this to be one of the hardest missions in the game, but uh, we'll discuss more about it whenever we dive right things in. So even then, at the moment right now, everything else is entirely in, well, goopy mess at this point. And as you can tell, uh, differently from the previous levels now, that, um, as you can see, the actual goop uh, design this time around is actually based off from, um, I would say, electric, which, because we point that out right away, just because we'll discuss more about it whenever we're able to get on with the norm, the main mission itself. So, first of all, let's grab this first ever blue coin on this world. So, as you can see, it plays it almost exactly like Gelato Beach, except it doesn't feel that much expansive until so whenever we get to episode 2, and especially no support in future episodes and beyond. Well, specifically the later missions. So, either way, for the most part, though, we just have to clear out all kinds of stuff, and there's not much blue coins we can collect at the moment until whenever we deal with the actual main mission, as well as the future episodes in mind. So let's talk to this Pianta right here to see what his problem is. Oh, please, tell me. My nightmare is over. Can you save me? I don't know why, but you just very look very capable to me. Listen, what all started around noon, this giant manta-shaped thing showed up. It was this paper-thin floating silhouette. It came and covered the hotel grounds in this electric goop. Then, oh, uh, the horror. My beautiful hotel. My bu my poor building. It sunk in the middle of that awful ooze. Why me? Why? Now, I've got it to staff clean up, cleaning up, but where's my hotel? I don't know about you. What am I supposed to do? I just can't sit back and... Ah, it's back! That glossal glue! Do something! Oh boy, we actually come across into this manta ray kind of boss. And he looks incredibly huge. So yeah, here's the, uh, the next boss fight in this game, which appears to be... I don't know what I uh, usually explain about this boss fight's name, but it appears to be like a silhouette of a manta ray for sure. So most people seem to consider, consider this to be one of the hardest bosses in the game, probably because of how the fact that in addition to trying to take down a uh, multitude of uh, manta ray silhouettes, as you can see, every time you spray at them, either the flood, or even just trying to able to actually just to use the half of nozzle, which is my personal method of uh, my personal favorite method by simply able to take those guys down. Every once in a while, though, they manage to able to split into a few pieces of those manta ray um, silhouettes, which even then it gets a little bit tricky to able to. Uh, get rid of them all because whenever we get into the almost nearly at the very end of this particular point We'll discuss more about it whenever we're able to actually just uh, Well take down most of those uh, manta rays basically so either way though uh, for the most part though He's gonna have to keep on spraying at them But the, you also need to be very careful because that's what that Pianta tells us to do Is the fact that there's gonna be a lot of electric goop which means that every time you touch those electric goop you will take damage, so as a result, it will become a lot more hazardous than the forms of how it does it on the previous worlds for sure. Well, at least ever since in Bianco Hills, as well as uh, Reco Harbor and stuff like that, so everything else will be a little bit tricky as it goes by, and especially noticeable how the fact that every time when the actual Manta Ray Sulu decide to able to 
wander around in the outside portion of pseudo, uh, surrounded beach. As you can tell, that they also just trying to spread out all these kinds of electric goop. So as a result, we need to be very cautious with that. And to make matters even much more difficult than that is the fact that every time you get knocked back by the forms of that specific uh, manta ray silhouette, um, every once in a while there is the fact that well, it can either lead you to uh, the safer zone or if potentially speaking it will cause you to able to lead you to the dangerous spot such as of course the electric goop so as a result uh oh looks like they're going after me so yeah as, as you can probably guys can clearly tell if they start to go a little bit more pinky like uh, this means about the fact that they actually going after you so rather than just like to able to uh, wandering around all over the place, so every now and then now is the fact that they obviously trying to go after you, so they're only gunning for you, basically, from ever since then, so, oh jeez, why does my frame rate start to drop all of a sudden, but, either way though, it just gets a little bit chaotic, I think that's what usually happens right there, so, yeah, that's what most people think, this is probably is the hardest boss fight in the game for sure, but as long as you get used to with the actual, uh, the spraying technique as you can see right there, you should do it no problem, but most of the time, most people seem to always attempt to go, um, almost to the edge of the actual sea itself, which I usually do that all the time since as a kid, but I no longer do it anymore just because I'm a hardcore hedgehog, so even then, or not, not nearly the, um, the hardcore hedgehog after all, but hardcore gamer of course. So either way though, um, I think this is the last one. Yep, that's the last one. And as soon as you deal with all of them out, then the actual hotel itself, in addition to with uh, the electric goop has now disappeared, the actual Delfino Hotel is now being restored. Or the Hotel Delfino, as what it said on the actual, uh, the actual label sign, so... And of course, the Shining Sprite appears, so they can, we can expect it able to obtain that, so... Before we grab the Shining Sprite, however, though, we'll just go ahead and, uh... Just do something quickly, such as... Well, first of all, I need to grab, uh, some more blue coins, if you can clearly tell, thanks to the forms of those... Well, we need to clean those, uh, these two Nukies up, so hopefully we were able to actually just to clean them up. And then eventually, whenever we do those kinds of accomplishments, then we were able to get ourselves not only one blue coin, but another blue coin thanks to the, that particular new key as well. So, yeah, that's how it goes basically. So even then, no, that's why I always attempt to go for that uh, specific stuff for that matter. So, so far we've got 53 shine sprites and 126 blue coins. So, yeah, I can't even believe at this point in time, we're now under the halfway point when it comes to the blue coins total amount, which even then, Sure, it might still take a while to able to actually just to collect them all, until when if we get to the next world after this, oh man, it will be a lot of long journey to able to actually just to collect those things. Alright, here we go on to episode 2, the Hotel, the hotel Lobby's Secret. And unlike episode 1, it's gonna immediately take place inside the hotel, which I think that could be the same applies for the majority of the missions, except later on in episode 6, because, well, we'll get some more about it whenever we're able to get onto that stuff and during until Friday, so, which by that time it will be roughly the same day as when, you know, Animal Crossing New Horizons will be releasing for the Nintendo Switch for sure, along with, uh, uh, well, I'm pretty sure that the actual bundle of Animal Crossing New Horizons already came out recently for the Nintendo Switch, by the sake of time for every single, uh, um, for worldwide audiences or something like that, so even then, uh, but then again, I'm probably not gonna pick it up because of how the fact that Animal Crossing is not my cup of, uh, not my cup of tea or anything like that, so I do apologize if I'm still a little bit enthusiastic about it, so... Still, you really can't deny about the fact that some of these opinions have been slightly uh, different from most other people, but either way though, that's how it goes basically when it comes to reality of life, so... Oh, dang it! I couldn't even grab the ledge! And the reason why I'm going onto the back way onto the hotel is because there might be a blue coin in here, so... So hopefully we need to keep on doing somersaults before we're able to pull this off successfully. And there we go, that's one of those um, blue coins that we found. And we got 128, not to be confused, as the cancelled Super Mario game from the, the same console for the Nintendo GameCube back in the day, which is of course Super Mario 128, which later, later on becomes Pikmin. So 
I think that makes it pretty obvious for that specific solution when it comes to development cycles or something, so... Another blue coin, which you can only do that by simply spraying it onto that specific flame on the left side, as far as I'm aware. So, anyway, so let's go ahead and get inside the actual hotel, because what this Pianta was trying to say to us is going to be filled to the brim with ghosts, so we need to investigate for that specific stuff. And from here, we can able to... Whoa! Those boos, man, they look very, very weird in this game. But even then, no, because because I keep on thinking of something related to Super Mario 64 and even in future games, but this might be actually be the only uh, 3D Mario game to feature one of the weirdest enemies designs throughout. Sure, it looks very cool looking uh, kind of thing, but either way, uh, I'm just a little bit too nitpicky at this point. So basically, you can able to actually spray those uh, pink boos, as you can see, and every time you spray those pink boos, trying to surrounding for that specific matter, uh, this allows you to able to actually create those platforms, whereas you can only do that for only like quite a few times, only because we need to get inside this particular, uh, that particular blue portal that has been leads into these boo's mouth, by simply either wait until whenever we create a platform, or we can just simply just do the actual hover nozzle method. And from here, we can able to transport into, what else? The next secret course. Or, for that particular matter though, the obstacle course in general. I think this is what most people think, they get, uh, they get ourselves a lot of trouble with this obstacle course, probably because of how the fact that it's worse at the very end. And you probably know why about the fact that most people have trouble with this is, is the fact that what if you come across into the actual rotating gear, Specifically, whenever we get to the very end, there's just a little bit of annoying occurrence where there's actually a fault around the slope detection, which if every time you're ever just trying to be very cautious with the actual slopes, sometimes you can either just be safe with it, or potentially speaking, there are a few times that you might able to actually mess up, or even just in this case, slip up, and you have to restart the whole entire pro uh, process again, so... Yeah, it seems a little bit of annoying, but either way, though, that's how it goes when it comes to difficulty progression, so... Oh, jeez! Okay. That was pretty close for the most part. Sometimes I have to keep on rotating the camera every once in a while, though, because there are a few times that, um, as far as this obstacle course generally trying to recommend me to, that we need to shift it over to a 2D perspective, so... I'm dead! Ah, uh, you see what I mean with the actual slope detection right there? I just have no idea how I just simply just mess things up at one point. So yeah, that's what most people think that this is worth the actual, uh, what the heck? I just seriously messed things up at the beginning. Ah, <sighs> oh well, let's try this again, shall we? Thankfully though, uh, just like any forms of Sonic Unleashed for the Eggman land, specifically on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 version, every time you die on these obstacle courses, thankfully you can able to re-grind those uh, exactly the same extra lives again. So, at least that was uh, very curious and all that stuff. So, at least even then though, it doesn't give me that much trouble when it comes to giving me an extra lives, especially how easy to get extra lives in this game this time around, rather than just Resetting all the way back to five extra lives every time, which I think that's maybe... Well, I don't know, how do I speak about that, so... Anyway, so we got ourselves these returning sand blocks ever since in uh, Gelato Beach, I'm pretty sure. So even then, though, everything else is pretty much unchanged when it comes to that, except it's a lot smaller to navigate, and... Um, yeah, that's how it goes, basically. Even though we've already come across into these uh, small sand blocks ever since... You know, in Gelato Beach for sure. So, yeah, there's not much else I can speak of, so... Okay, need to concentrate here. No! <sighs> Three fails in this one episode that I'm just not a big fan of. <sighs> Yeah, I can definitely see why that most people have trouble with this obstacle course. Until whenever we get to nearly towards the end, that there's going to be another one of those uh, frustrating obstacle course coming up. But then again, though, we'll save that until the later time. But for now, we'll just have to mainly focus on this from now on, so... Uh. 
I can't believe I, how I still consider this to be one of the hardest or the second hardest obstacle course in the whole entire game, in my honest opinion. But the the number one hardest uh, obstacle course throughout the game, it was actually nearly the end, so... But then again, you see why when if we get into that specific stuff. Specifically, if we're floodless the whole entire time, so... Alright, so uh, let's try this part again, make sure we don't slip up. Oh my god, that was close. Uh, I'm just nervous. I'm scared. Oh, oh, that was really close. But it's not over yet because of sand blocks, and of course we got ourselves one last enemy to deal with. But let's obtain a shine sprite, and there we go. Oh man, three deaths on this particular mission. I'm not even kidding. Three deaths I actually encountered. And most of the time I keep failing a lot, despite I've accidentally just ignored uh, the actual 1-up kind of thing. So even then, no. but regardless of everything else though, we still got roughly about 31 extra lives. Or technically speaking, 32. Because much like the previous 3D Mario games, and even the future games for sure, uh, if you get like 0 extra lives count, it still counts as like 1 chance left. So, yeah, something's worth mentioning, so... Anyways, let's head back onto the same mission as before, except now we need to take on the forms of what else? The Secret Giant Sprite. And I believe just like uh, Bianco Hills, and especially notable with uh, Peanut Park, I'm pretty sure it might actually contain the two Secret Giant Sprites based off from the, uh, the Secret Missions, I'm pretty sure. Because even then, we'll talk more about it whenever we get towards it, so... Anywho though, uh, let me know in the comments below if you have trouble with this particular obstacle course, such as myself sometimes. But anyway, let's head on to... Oh, I'm in the, uh, a little bit of an odd uh, placement here. So, uh, yeah, I think of like... Well, I don't know, how do I truly explain that? But anyways. So let's head back in here, and this time we now access to Flood. So, because of that, yeah, let's get to it. So... We, at least we don't have to worry about the forms of the actual slope detection anymore until whenever we get into the forms of likely nearly towards the end, so... I believe the red switch is going to be at the middle portion of this obstacle course somehow, so... That's why I get the feeling from this point, so... Anyway, so let's keep on smashing those blocks every time whenever we do all sorts of wall climbing or just wall jumping in general, so... There it is, there's the red switch just beyond here, and, well, once again, collect every single of those 8 red coins. And it only took me about um, a minute and 30 seconds this time, so even then we can expect to able to hopefully try to grab the rest of these uh, the red coins for sure, so... Why do I just... Did I just make it? <sighs> that was just bad. Oh man, I had a lot of trouble with this stage for some reason, if only because um, if I was going to be able to try, try to jump off the sand blocks sometimes, sometimes though that my jump button does not even react in time. But then again, you can't able to grind uh, the extra life every time you die because it actually respawns every time. So at least we're pretty much going to be safe for the most part though. So I don't know how many extra lives we can get until whenever we get to the hardest part of the game. Until likely due to the fact that whenever we get to Delfino Plaza at some point, but then again, I will definitely see what happens there when the time comes, so... Anyways, let's try this mission again, and hopefully try to succeed for this point this time. And hopefully, without too much deaths, and without any trial and error annoyances here and there, and especially, most notably, um, endurance. Or, not so much endurance, but to be more accurately, um, just trying to be more precise. If you think you're missing on one red coin, if uh, for the first uh, first time players who ever experienced this, well, it was actually down right here, so... Oh, can I even make it? Can I even make it? Thank you, Grabbing Ledges! Oh, man. I'm very glad that Grabbing Ledges was a thing in this game, after all. Well, it's unlike in uh, uh, Super Mario 3D Land, as well as uh, Super Mario 3D World, that does not have a lot of emphasis on Grabbing Ledges at one for form or another. I'm pretty sure that in the... Uh, Super Mario 64 and Galaxy and Galaxy 2 does have a grabbing ledges kind of scenario, as well as, uh, you know, recently Super Mario Odyssey. So, yeah, at least I expect us to see how this turns out. So, when it comes to likely grabbing ledges will save your life, so... 
Anyways, let's obtain the next shine sprite, and booyah, there we go. And as you can see, that on the blue coins counter, that we've got 130 so far. So I think we've got about 110 blue coins left, according to the actual total remaining. So at least we can able to actually spend how many uh, some of these uh, precious blue coins we can able to get left. So. Anyway though, so let's go ahead and uh, hop back into this world again, and do the next mission. Episode 3, Mysterious Hotel Delfino. And if I recall correctly, that uh, since after all we've still managed to be able to access to Yoshi, I'm pretty sure that we might need to use him for the sake of this mission. Because of one reason or another, we'll get into it in just a sec. So, even then, I just keep on bobbing into a wall like a moron, Oh yeah, kind of thing about it actually. Oh, first of all, let's go ahead and grab this blue coin first. Uh, funny thing about this is the fact that this particular pavement right there, that the one we actually went to right now, son of a biscuit! I keep bobbing into the whole body of arrow signs so many times. Ah, I can't help it for myself if I was trying to be faster or stuff. But anyways, uh, like episode 2, we instantly get transported into the actual hotel itself, except now we can able to do more things this time around, rather than just trying to deal with the actual booze and stuff like that for that nature. So even then, I get a feeling that the majority of the blue coins might be actually be in the actual hotel itself, especially with the other part we'll get into in just a moment. But for now on though, it might be still contains like a whole bunch of ghosts around here, but either way though, that way we can able to solve any kinds of mystery involved, so... Oh yeah, something's worth mentioning by the way, since after all, this is uploaded during today on the 18th of March today, so even then, sadly though, is the fact that some other new films that they was expecting to able to be releasing on, specifically, uh, let's just say for example, uh, Disney's Mulan remake, which I don't even care about because I prefer, um, the animated counterparts, and for what I've noticed on the reviews, uh, counter, or even the actual reviews of, uh, the Mulan remake on, um, uh, IMDB website, and they did say about the fact that sadly that Mulan remake is actually is the weakest remakes in the entire point because uh, it seems they pretty much gone all like running out of ideas somehow, especially noticeable how the fact that they really ruins the actual charm compared to the forms of how it does in the original Disney counterparts in 1998. So, but at least even then, at least I can able to skip that. Well, unfortunately for that particular film, it has now been delayed due to the forms of, what else, the corona freaking virus. And speaking of which, actually, it's the fact that we already know that the, sadly, that the No Time to Die film has sadly delayed in June November this year, probably because of the same thing. And also, another set of films which there are, well obviously, uh, you know the film called Fast and Furious and stuff like that? Well, specifically Fast and Furious 9. That film will sadly be delayed until next year, until in June 2021. Which I'm gonna say, it is so, so disappointing, because I, I was expecting that about the fact that after the release of the 8th film that's been came out, after, well at least if, ever since in 2017 according to the actual release, so it's pretty sad that the Fast and Furious 9 will be delayed in 2021, which reminds me, it will be on exactly the same uh, year as in the forms of, well, Fast and Furious 10, if depending on the forms of how the fact with the time schedule has been changed. But then again, no, we'll see what happens there until when the future comes, but even then, no, it's just... It just really ticks me off with all these uh, coronavirus thing is still spreading and spreading and stuff. Which, uh, also that Peter Rabbit 2, which the film I also don't care for, uh, that film will be still delayed in uh, August this year, so at least I'm probably not going to see it because I'm not really into those kinds of stuff. But that's probably just me. That's probably just me anyway. So, anyway, so let's grab this next blue coin, which at the sake of time, we know on 135 of them. So even then, no. Um, we almost get towards that the actual 100 uh, blue coins remaining counter. So even then, no, we can expect to see this one turns out. So anyways, uh, we need to go over here, and then if you try to ground pound on this little marking right here, then you would able to lead us to the Shine Sprite itself. So, not too complicated, it's actually pretty simple when you get the hang of it though. Especially that adorable Yoshi was actually drawn into the actual mission, so as a result, he's always feeling very, very cheerful and happy. Like always do. 
But yeah, you get the idea for that solution about the film stuff. I'm getting so, so ticked off when it comes to uh, certain films has been delayed. Well, to be more specifically, Fast and Furious 9 has been delayed until next year, and especially noticeable with, uh, well, I wasn't really care about Mulan remake, so... But anywho, though. Next mission we have is The Secret of Casino Dolfino. Which means, once again, we're going to be taking place on the actual hotel itself. But not just the actual hotel, but to be more accurate, the second portion of the hotel, which means I think we might do some casino gobble- uh, well, compulsive gambling. So even then, though, we can expect we can able to do some gambling stuff, right? Well, if we go talk to this particular, well, after I get smacked by the wall, we talk to this Pianto here, and then we can dive right into that specific uh, casino area, and look at that. It's all glorious, doesn't it? Especially how the fact that, if you're familiar with Super Mario 64, uh, Luigi set of minigames in Super Mario 64 DS specifically with those minigames with the gambling stuff, this music almost feels exactly, in, uh, feels slightly similar to the ones with how it does in Super Mario 64 DS, except, well, this is not on the DS, it was actually on the GameCube, so, but even then, though, let's grab this, uh, this next blue coin, which just appears to be on these little, uh, weird slots, so even then, no, and, and I think another blue coin, which is gonna be in, uh, one of those candle flames, which I think is the one on the right, so speaking of which, there we go. So yeah, the entire mission can be subbed up as like this. I think it's pretty much gonna take place in the same, uh, kind of scenario, likely due to the forms of the actual obstacle course we need to work with, but... Before we go on to that, however, though, we need to deal with probably the most tedious part about this mission, and that was the fact that, well, as you can see on screen, we have to deal with the forms of the actual real slots, or in this, in this case, the actual slot machine, which, every time you're trying to go for the actual slot machines, the ones you need to aim for is, of course, the Lucky Sevens, but uh, if you're trying to get the Lucky Sevens all in one go, then you won't be able to proceed into probably the most uh, time-consuming segment in this particular mission. So even then, uh, we'll point it out whenever we get to it though, so you have to do the actual slot machines twice by the way. Like one of them on the left, which thankfully this one is actually really easy because you can only do like one panel at a time rather than just all three all in one go. So relatively speaking, if you're trying to able to be very cautious with the actual spraying, then you would do it okay, but even then though, we got the first Lucky Sevens. And now that doesn't end off here, because now we need to do it on the second slot. In fact, we need to do this twice, by the way, because I'm pursuing this is going to be one of those, uh, another secret shine sprites. So even then, uh, we'll hopefully try to get to it at some form or another. But what makes this mission a little bit dragged on compared to the forms of how it does it on the previous secret mission is the fact that, well, you're going to have to deal with the actual slot machines and stuff like that. Sure, it's fun for most gambling stuff, unless if you're really into those, a lot of coins and stuff, which, um... Speaking of the forms of the 100 coin missions, or the 100 coin shine sprite, by the way, um, I don't know if it's possible you can able to do this with, uh, ah, uh, there we go, finally. Huh. <sighs> so when you deal with those two slots, then we have to deal with the actual, uh, the flip panel segments, which, I will say, this particular part can get pretty irritating at times, so I will admit though right away, because you know with the actual water collusion, well, sometimes, uh, the actual main emphasis on this part, though, is as you can see, we do need to able to get the full picture of the actual Shine Sprite itself. You know, the iconic Shine Sprite, of course, from the actual Isle Dolphino itself. So, what makes this a little bit irritating that he forms of how it does it on the slots to me, though, is the fact that, I swear, my water collusion on these little question marks can get pretty random at times, especially how... Whenever I managed to able to first time experiencing this mission as a kid, I can never for the life of me never able to know how this works. But it will take you about a couple of minutes until you're able to actually solve this uh, pro uh, solve this out. But either way, this is a little bit tedious sometimes, but I will admit though right away that at least whenever we get into the actual secret course itself, specifically the actual obstacle course I'd like to say, it should get a little bit more interesting to say the least, because we have not seen the actual new type of uh, environment or anything like that, assuming if we try to jump right in, so... Oh man, this is gonna be a little bit irritating, especially how most of these square panels always attempt to go into the inside portion, that I honestly think that the inside portion was actually is the trickiest part about this, because... 
then again, most of the time, that the actual water collusion thing right there just sometimes throws you off at points, even if you really want to fill up the entire space of the actual panels themselves, as you can see. But even then, though, but sadly, to the point is out, is the fact that we need to do this twice, by the way, in order to progress. So, when it comes to likely for 100%ing the actual whole entire thing, even if you really want to go for the entire access to the forms of Corona Mountain, as what Flood mentions when uh, Bowser Jr. Kid kidnaps Princess Peach, of course. Ah, oh, so close, come on. Oh, really? <sighs> Screw you. Thank you. Now we've got this tedious part out of the way, let's dive into this pipe. And once again, we are completely floodless the whole entire thing, so... Let's see what we got. Well, this looks pretty promising. It appears to be the actual, uh, like a sunset kind of vibe to it. And as you can see, we got the returning shifting blocks ever since in, uh, I would say the beginning of the game. Likely in Bianco Hills, for, for example. Except now we need to able to deal with, like, shifting blocks, as you can see. And also that, well, so you're gonna have to be very careful before you don't get crushed. And especially noticeable, you don't want to fall off, so... And luckily there's an extra life right there in case if, uh, well, this particular secret course was actually as one of the shortest of the game. Probably because it's not that long to begin with, and second, well, I don't think it's that much, uh, lengthy moments here and there, so even then I, I wish to be expected at this point. If I kind of think about it though, bizarrely enough, I know it sounds a little bit strange by saying this, but... Every time whenever I see this particular environment in the background, it always kind of reminds me of something related to uh, the Super Monkey Ball Adventure um, Zootopia uh, challenge levels, because in that particular game, it does have a sun in the background, but to me, the entire background almost kind of reminds me of that game. But I digress, let's obtain the Shrine Sprite itself, and, well, we are good to go. And I'm pretty sure the entire background is actually inspired by um, the actual uh, Sonia Beach or something like that, or Serana Beach. I think that's what the actual thing has been going for here. Well, at least if I uh, remember it correctly, or maybe I'm wrong. But either way, though, I'm just a little, I'm just guessing. That's all. So, anyways, let's do this one last mission for today, and that is, of course, heading back onto episode four once again to deal with all this tedium, and then we can able to take on, of course, the next red coin challenge. So. Despite the fact that it's actually pretty short by the looks of it, so... Yeah, I kind of think about it. For this particular pavement right there, the ones I went into right now, uh, this does inspire us by the actual Nintendo GameCube with all these button uh, layouts and stuff like that, with all these little puddles as well as these actual uh, coney parts from the actual uh, huts or something like that. Even though it's hard to explain about this sometimes, but either way, um, what if you look upon... Uh, the Mario Wikipedia, for example, in the Serana Beach uh, particular uh, research. Uh, that particular outside portion for the actual uh, shapings when it comes to the puddles and stuff like that, or the water, I should say, it, it really inspires by the forms of the Nintendo GameCube controller. Like, we got ourselves the four face buttons on the, uh, well, A, B, X, and Y buttons, as well as um, the control stick, the C stick, and the D pad, which I think is actually pretty cool in concept with all these uh, islands that usually just actually has to be representing with. In fact, uh, I don't know if I can able to research it for you guys just to, just to prove it to you about what the image itself looks like. But then again, no, it's just a little bit of a guessing kind of uh, way. I, I I really do apologize with the actual dialogue for itself, honestly, guys, because I'm just so so ticked off with certain films just being delayed again. So. But I digress, and it's also it's getting pretty much limited for this point right now when it comes to cinemas at this point right now because most people seem to don't really watch these films um, for time and time again, probably because of that again, the coronavirus is getting much worse and worse as time uh, goes, so... But I digress, so let's go ahead and take care of this, uh, this thing here for the final time and hopefully this will be the last time trying to do this because even then, well... Obviously, we still need to take on the forms of the actual red coin challenge by itself as well. So, even then, there's not much else we can able to just to speak of. So, apart from the fact that you can make it a little bit too fast, but if you try to do it way too fast on this specific segment, as you can see right there, sometimes it really seems to able to make it a little bit more, well, not recommended. Because most of the time, that the actual water collusion sometimes with those, yeah, as you see that one right there, 
I swear I've never actually sprayed on that particular panel um, from the bottom. But most of the time, I just keep on messing things up with the actual image, so... But that's a little bit of a nitpicking side of things though, but either way, come on. Okay, there we go. Oh, no, I did not meant to spray on that. Come on, there we go. Whew. So anyways, let's get on to the red coin challenge on that particular, um, secret course. And if I recall correctly, that we've got about a minute to do this. So, yep, it's just a minute. So, I think this will be the last um, obstacle uh, course challenge when it comes to red coin uh, challenges that has heavily emphasis on uh, one minute time limits this time around. Because until whenever we get into, I would say, the final two obstacle courses, like these ones right here, uh, we'll get to that shortly afterwards until likely, well, I would say until next week. Or something like that, probably because of how the fact that I just want to take care of uh, Sirona Beach for now on, as well as, uh, well, I would say we might do it until likely uh, Saturday or something like that, because we just want to get the actual processing of this Let's Play goes a little bit too fast and what have you, but then again, no, we'll see what happens there until whenever we get to towards the end of March at some form or another, but... Anyway, so at least we got ourselves the next Shine Sprite right here, so we just need to be very careful not to mess things up with that giant, ginormous uh, rotating cube. And there we go. I think, seemingly to say, we're just pretty much going to guarantee to end things off at this point right there. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Let's Play of Super Mario Sunshine is the fact that we might be able to actually continue things on in Serona Beach while taking on the next few missions and eventually we might get ourselves the next few blue coins and well honestly I really don't know so see you guys until on Friday later fellas